Hi everyone and welcome back to my home. In today's video, I'm really excited to be giving you a detailed tour around my utility room. It's the hardest working room in the house. We do so many things in here, not just laundry and storing all the cleaning items, but we do flower arranging, we store all of our posts. So I've got so many great tips to share with you guys on how to get the most from your utility room. So I hope you enjoy it. The main focal feature in this utility room is this whole area here with the butler sink. And when we were designing this utility room, I knew I wanted to have a big oversized butler sink. They're great for arranging flowers, doing hand washing, just super practical. This one is from Waterworks, as is the tap. Um, this one is called the RW Atlas design and I absolutely love it. It's quite industrial and chunky. Um, but I also think it's very elegant and chic and it has a little hand spray as well which I would definitely include if you've got a big sink it just makes it so much easier for washing the sink after you've used it. For the worktop in here I used a quartz stone this one's from Cambria and I loved this one because it had lots of variation lots of different colours on the worktop and it tones really well with the marble tile splash pack that I've chosen these ones are from Mandarin Stone and I absolutely love these. I get asked about them all the time and they've actually been really practical as well. Even though it's a mosaic tile and this is a very busy, hardworking space, the grout stayed really nice and clean. For the area above the sink, I specifically didn't want to have um, fitted cupboards. I felt like it's a really narrow space and when you're um, doing stuff at the sink, you don't want to feel like you've got cupboards coming really close to your eyes. So instead I used this um, floating shelf, which I did in a contrasting wood. Um, this is an oak veneer that's had a stain on it. And I kept that as shallow as possible while still allowing enough depth for um, accessories. So I'd say it's about 25 to 30 centimeters deep. And then I've dressed that with clusters of accessories. And these are just purely decorative, like. This is not any practical storage, but I wanted something nice to look at as I come into the utility room. And then above each cluster, you can see there's a wall light. These ones are from Hector Finch and I absolutely love them. They're so great because you can angle them so that you highlight the objects um, as you want. This particular piece of art, this one's from Rachel Dean and it's um, all botanical flowers. Um, that have been put into a plaster cast and I think that's really pretty and very rustic and appropriate for a utility room. Maybe not a normal utility room but we do a lot of flower arranging in here. And then this painting here, I'm going to show who this is by. I found her at a local art fair and I just loved all the colours in this and how it's got very chunky um, paint strokes. And my husband thought I was crazy when I said to him I'm buying a painting to put in the utility room. Um, but actually, I don't think you should just save art for your more formal spaces. I think for me, I love looking at this painting because this is the room that I probably walk through the most. I walk to go to the playground for the kids in here. I'm constantly doing stuff and it's really nice to have beautiful objects to appreciate, not just thinking, oh, it's just a utility room. I won't bother putting art in there. And then I've got one of my favorite candles. This one's from Dalesford. And I just love how it is quite utilitarian with a jam jar design. And again, another cluster with a jug and just a crackle glaze vase. And this one's a Rachel Vosper candle, which smells amazing. For on the worktop, I like to keep it quite clean in here. I have had a little tidy up, so it's normally a bit more cluttered than this, but this is how I'd ideally have it. Um, this little marble tray is from our collection with Coes, and I find this so useful for just containing all the different types of soaps. Um, that you want to use. So I've just got some method hand wash here and this little um, block of soap. This is more just for decorative, but I like how it looks. There is pretty much a cupboard for everything. So this is the main cleaning materials cupboard. And this just gives me so much pleasure when I look at it because it's all like organized by type. Like this is all laundry. This is general household cleaning. That's all like to do with nappies. And then we've got spare sponges. There's a place for everything. And I love these um, spice racks. When we were designing this cupboard with the, um, the manufacturer, 
I knew I didn't want to have deep shelves because I find when I've got deep shelves it's really hard to see what's at the back of the shelf and I thought rather than doing that let's go for a shallow shelf um, and take away a bit of space from that and give it to these spice racks and it means that you've got lots of different areas that you can see all at once when you open it and it's a lot more practical. In this cupboard it's probably the most indulgent cupboard that we've got in here but my husband and I love excuse my cupboard and um, we love candles and we always wanted to have a space where we could store all of our candles and sort of see them all it's one of those geeky things that we both love so having a candle pantry was top of our list and we were designing this space this is quite an unusual one that not many people have heard of um Nuida Noho this is bun number nine and it smells insane um, I used to wear this as a perfume and I loved it so much but it smells quite different there's a candle, this is Ava's favourite. She she is so into smell. Everything she does, she always smells it. I think she got that from me. Oh, lime, basil and mandarin. That's a good one. That's nice and fresh. Another one of my favourite aspects of this room is the handles. I feel like handles are the jewellery of any room. When you've got a lot of joinery, it's nice to choose a beautiful handle. Um, these ones I got from Armac Martin. I think it's called the Gaumont Handle and I chose it to be in the SAS finish, which is a lacquered antique brass. And the color is absolutely beautiful. It's quite a dark antique brass, so it's not too golden. Coordinates really nicely with the waterworks tap and the lights. Um, but because it's lacquered, it's really practical as well to use in a room like a utility room where you might touch the handles with some cleaning product on your hand. It won't tarnish or change over time. So I'm really, really happy with those and they're such a beautiful quality. I'm always tweaking all the rooms in my house and although I'm happy with all the fitted joinery, I decided to add a rug after a couple of years of the room not having a rug because I wanted to make it feel a bit cosier. I love spending time in here so much. If I could fit an armchair in here, I would. So this rug is from Stark and it's an Abaca rug. And I chose that one because this is such a high traffic area. The kids go in and out to go to their play area in the garden. So it's really hard wearing um, and it looks like a sisal rug. And I love this um, herringbone pattern, which kind of mirrors the herringbone on the tiles, um, but it's slightly softer underfoot than a typical sisal rug. Um, so I think it works really well in the room. I love it. At the moment, this whole area, well, because Oscar is still in nappies, it's really good if you've got a, a child in nappies to have a nappy changing station upstairs, but also one downstairs, so you don't have to run up and down the whole time. So this is the whole area where we change his nappy. I store all his nappies and the water wipes in this basket and then um, I've got a little changing basket which I always have a towel in here and I think having a towel is much better than one of those um, changing mats where it's like the specific cover because you have to change them daily you keep them clean so with this one I just put a fresh towel in each day um, and this one just for a nice touch I have it um, monogrammed with P for Patterson um, and this is from Alco's collection so I think that looks nice. And then on the shelves above, again, similar idea to above the sink. I didn't want to bring the room in too much. So in the middle section, we've got these floating shelves and then that's flanked by two storage units that are set back slightly. And by setting them back slightly, it makes the room feel a little bit wider, but it also gives you a little bit more worktop um, if you're sort of sorting out washing or when you're ironing, you can put the piles of ironing on there and that works really well. This cupboard's changed use um, a bit since we originally designed it. I designed it as a cupboard where I was going to do flower arranging. Now, if you're a florist, you'll realise that was a big mistake because it doesn't have enough space. There was no way it was ever going to work, which is really unfortunate because it was a lovely idea. And I had this little pot filler tap from Waterworks that was going to fill the vases. And then I had this slot cut in the top so that when I chopped off any um, stems, I could just push those straight into the bin, which is underneath here. Um, and then I had these little racks made where I could put like rope and twine for arranging flowers. Now what we do is when a delivery or a package arrives, it goes straight into this cupboard, stays there until we've got time to open it later on that evening when the kids are in bed. And our post gets divided, SP post, KMP post from my husband. I've got monogram towels, having a linen collection with Coes. I'm obsessed with monogramming um, and it works so well because each person in the household has a separate shelf. This is Ava's shelf with her initials, my husband's, mine. This is our general, like our guest bedroom and guest loo. 
This is our last cupboard that I wanted to show you. Um, when we were redesigning this space, we knew that we wanted to do a lot of storage for the vases and we settled on this curved fronted cabinet because it works really well in terms of the, the space. If we'd had a square cupboard, it would have been quite difficult to know which side to put the door on and it would have jutted out with a sharp corner. So I love how the curved doors look. I think they look really elegant. And I love the matching corners as well. I think that looks great. Um, but it, from a storage point of view, it works really well as well because with vases, or if you have a lot of any item, you want to be able to see them as much as possible. So you've got a really wide section at the front and then it just tapers back towards a corner. So I can see most of my vases at a glance and find the one that I want to use. I think if you're trying to improve your utility room, let's start two stages. One, if you have an existing utility room and you don't want to rip it out, there's so much that you can do from styling. One of my top tips would be to use wicker baskets. I use them on a lot of my open shelving and I feel like it's just a really nice way to store things. And you can get really well-priced ones from Ikea. Um, there's also the basketcompany.co.uk do incredibly good um, wicker baskets. And I think they just look beautiful and they're a great way of storing things as well. Another thing that you can do is change your handles. Um, I think you can completely spruce up um, some existing cabinets by changing the handle. Um, so that would make a big difference. And even just down to like organizing the inside of your cupboard, sorry, Oscar's like squealing in the background. Um, organizing your cupboard. So in my candle cupboard, you know, I used some of those boxes that I'd got um, candles in. Um, or gift boxes or shoe boxes. If you keep those and you know line the inside of your drawer so you're segmenting the drawer into different sections, that just makes it so much more organized. Or if you're organizing your shelves inside a cupboard, like use those little trays or boxes, get a label maker, Amazon sell them, um, and just organize the inside of your cupboards, that makes such a big difference. No matter what the room looks like, if it's disorganized, you can have the most beautiful utility room in the world. If it's a mess and there's no order, it won't feel good. And then I think the last thing that I would really share is um, just give your utility room a little bit of love. I think it's, there's this assumption that it's kind of like a back room, it's not important. And I certainly made that mistake when I moved here. Before we renovated the utility room, it was just white, plain white, cheap cupboards, cheap laminate um, worktop. I just didn't want to waste any budget on it. And then I realized after living here for a few years, actually that's a really important room and I hate how it feels, um, which is why then we um, invested in it a bit more. But you know, doing things like hanging a piece of art in your utility room, that doesn't cost a lot of money, but it's something that you'll really appreciate as you walk past. So just give your utility room a little bit of love. So if you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. In our next video, I'm going to be giving a tour of our kitchen. So if you don't want to miss out, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.